proud of our football club today because we need character, we need togetherness, and this is what proves it. This is what shows it. We didn't we didn't walk the walk tonight. We talked the talk. Hi Barnet fans, my name is Joseph Orrell. I'm a massive Barnet fan, I've been a Barnet fan for my whole life. In this mini documentary I'm going to talk about a bit, a bit about what I'm a Barnet fan and the club's journey from the old ground to the new ground. My first game at Underhill was very special. It was a cold Tuesday night at home to Wickham Wanderers in the league. I remember we, we, we ended up losing the game 1-0, but I remember sitting behind the goal and it definitely ignited my passion and love for football and Barnet FC. Underhill was home to the Bees for over 100 years, from 1907 to 2013. Underhill had a very famous slope which made um, play at difficult, uh, at times very, very difficult to play on. I remember the last game at Underhill was very, very special. It was uh, the uh, penult uh, penultimate game of the season at home to Wickham Wanderers. And Barnet had to win the game to have a chance staying in League Two as they went to their new stadium at the Hive. It was quite a cagey opening start to the game until, until an 80th minute strike from Jake Hyde put the Bees 1-0 up. Barnet were winning 1-0 going into the 90th minute of the game until we conceded a late penalty, which saw Wickham had a chance to, to, to get a goal back. I remember I was behind the goal when it happened. I remember it was a, a, a very tense atmosphere. Um, and so they, they stepped up to the penalty and Graham Stack uh, le leaped his right-hand side and saved, uh, saved the penalty. I remember it was a, a, a very special game and a, a very special send-off to Underhill. Next up faced a, a very tough game away at Northampton. Um, ideally, uh, we, we had to win the game to ultimately stay up in, uh, in League Two. A uh, very tough game, obviously Northampton a very good side and uh, it's a very tough place to go. Um, unfortunately Barnet lost 2-0 there which ultimately meant we, we were relegated um, as we went to our new stadium. So obviously, it was quite disappointing I think obviously to kind of leave, leave the old stadium then to have to go to the new stadium kind of being relegated. It's a, a, a very tough feeling. Um, but yeah, so we're going to head down to the new stadium now. So you join us here at the new stadium, the Hive. Um, it's obviously like five miles down the road from the old stadium, but it's a million miles away in terms of facilities and the overall look of the stadium. Barnet FC have been here now for eight years, and in the eight years there's definitely been some ups and downs. Last season was very disappointing for Barnet. We finished bottom of the table, but thankfully due to the, uh, the ongoing COVID pandemic, there was no relegation. So we almost, I guess, got away with that one a little bit. But um, this season there's been a big improvement. We're currently sitting 16th in the league, but I think if you look at where we were last season to where we are now, I think it's a massive improvement. Dean Brennan has been managing the side this season. Um, obviously seven games in, we had Harry Kuehl, but he got sacked uh, after picking up two points from the opening seven games. So Dean Brennan took in um, and, and took charge. Obviously he was, he was uh, the director of football before, but he obviously dropped down to become the manager for this season. And I think he's done a good job. I think obviously it's, it's been a tough season. I think we haven't kind of always had the, the run of luck with COVID. I think we've had a few, I think two or three COVID issues this season. I think overall, with everything considered, Dean's done a good job. At the moment, we currently have uh, two low-knee players um, that, that, I, that I believe we have to contract down to next season if we want to achieve success. Ross Marshall is one of them. Now, now Ross Marshall is on loan from Stevenage, who are our local rivals. He plays at CDM, but can also put in a shift at centre-back as well. He's a top, top, top player. I think if we want to have any chance of getting promotion next season, we have to nail him down on, um, on a permanent contract. He's, he's played for the badge, not afraid to go in for challenges. The second low knee is Reese Gregor Cox. Now Reese is a is a striker or centre forward. He's 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 a very good player. He scored three goals in three games for us so far, and he's on loan from Crew. Um, he's a, he's a top top player once again. He's got pace. He's got a, a really good right foot, and I think he's what we need right now. I think we obviously we've got a, a couple of attacking players, but I think Reese is the spark up front that we really need if we want to achieve success again next season. Two very important play, uh, players for us this season have been Ephraim Mason Clark and Sam Beard. Ephraim Mason Clark's uh, come from the academy. He's a pacey winger. He, he likes to get on the ball. He makes things happen. Whereas Sam Bid's a left back. Uh, he's got some good pace. He can drive up that left hand side and whip balls in. We've had some very good games and very good results. Obviously, we beat Stockport away 2 1, and they're going to win the league this season. So, we've had some very good games. So, going on to next season, I think, like, like I said, I think playoffs has to be the overall uh, aim. Um, I think, yeah, if we can get those two or three uh, players down on permanent contracts, I think there's absolutely no reason why we can't challenge the playoffs next season. 
So as we conclude this documentary, I hope you have enjoyed. Um, I think the main, the main question is, can Barnett push up and progress in the leagues? I, th I think 100% we can. Um, it's going to take a lot of hard work and it's going to take a lot of money, I think. But we've got a good squad, a good manager and I think a good, a, a good club as a whole. So if, you, if, if, if you're a Barnett fan, I hope you enjoyed. And if you're not a Barnett fan, I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about the club.